to share my screen, let let's me uh, yeah, introduce myself. Uh, I am a passionate for hematology. And I'm, in my talk, what, I am, what we are going to do is to explain the process a little much more in detail, how we obtain all these uh, parameters and solutions that we think can, uh, be, uh, can help to the management and to the decision what to do with the patient of coronavirus. And now I am going to, check, to share my screen. Everybody can see now the screen? Oh, yeah, now it's perfect. Please go ahead, Dr. Perfect. Wendell. OK, let's begin. Here we see the uh, electronic microscope um, photo of the coronavirus, COVID-19. Here is a representation how the virus will look like if we can see in three dimensions. Here we make a, a review of the actual statistics of the COVID outbreak. In, um, in green, we have the total number of cases per day in the month in the world. In blue, the Chinese, as you can see, uh, till uh, the middle of the graph, the majority of the cases come from China. But after China became uh, a plateau and it begins the cases out of China that are in red uh, with uh, with uh, it now practically all the new cases come from the rest of the world. The important is that is uh, here I mentioned that the percentage of severe cases are, that requires a medical treatment are 19%. And from that, about 5%, 4.7% are critical and need intensive care unit and artificial uh, uh, respiration. This is a dramatic uh, slide because it's the uh, number of deaths per day. Here we can see in the beginning of the graph, the cases, uh, practically all of them from Wuhan, China. We see a peak uh, in the moment that China reconsidered the diagnosis of some previous cases that were not fitting the whole, uh, the whole criteria, but uh, that was not real one because you need to divide this peak with the previous uh, cases. And you can see that the, it came a plateau and after it was a decrease of the cases in China. After it begins, the, the, uh, are continue the number of deaths in the rest of the world. And you can see that now the slope is exponential. Uh, in this moment, today is higher, but of course I made the statistics two days ago. The cumulative, cumulative deaths are 6,900 cases uh, in, the, in the whole world. Uh, now are more cases in the rest of the world than in China. And I estimated, calculating the slope, that the cumulative deaths, if the slope continues the same, will be about 81,000 deaths at the end of this month. Here we see an important uh, fact. Uh, the um, percentage of deaths uh, with coronavirus, if the uh, country has a very good um, healthcare system, enough to treat all the patients and ideally as, as Wuhan did, creating a hospital only for these patients because the problem we face in Europe is quite difficult to create a hospital in few weeks or that uh, if you don't isolate the patients and you uh, uh, put the patients in a hospital that there are bone marrow transplant, uh, oncologic patients, uh, tuberculosis, etc. The normal patients that are in any hospital, the, the death rate will be much higher. Uh, in addition, when the system becomes saturated and intensive care units are full, now uh, in many countries they are beginning to habilitate hotels for uh, to treat these patients, the uh, infection uh, death rate can be 7%, like now in Italy, arriving to 8 But the reason it's a clear increase when the system is saturated. If all the countries that now are not yet in this position, 
if somebody hear me that is in the healthcare system of any of the other countries, please build hospitals because that is serious and we need to do similar than China did, create hospitals to have enough uh, uh, rooms for the severe and critical cases. Here you can see the comparison with SARS, 72%, uh, and the COVID is three times, uh, seven times more deadly than the uh, H1N1, that is the worst uh, influenza. Here, it's the number of total uh, patients in that we can see the influenza, a normal period in 100 days when it begins in winter in any country. This is an example of a country. And here we can see the COVID uh, infection. Here, we can see clearly that it's three times more infective than the influenza is one and one. And as maybe it's because nobody has antibodies to this virus, many people have previous antibodies to the H1N1 from previous infections. But this is a fact uh, we are going to face that uh, is going to be near three times more infective than influenza. The estimation now that in America will be uh, about 2 million between uh, 500, 700 and 2 million deaths in the when will become as frequent as the uh, influenza is one and one. Now we are going to see the hematology research studies that uh, we did in uh, Mind Ray. The participants of these studies, you can see here the, the authors. Sorry. And the first patient was, uh, the first case was a patient that entered in the hospital as a mild clinical case, become severe, and finally recover satisfactorily. We collected the blood samples of the patient with the coronavirus infection from the moment that the patient entered till the moment that was released. We recorded the clinical symptoms every day too. Here we can see that was similar that was shown by, by Dr. Huang, that uh, here we can see that at the beginning, the, uh, in the first, uh, here in the first square uh, left uh, top, these are the white blood cells and neutrophils. You can use any of them, but of course better than neutrophils, that shows the peak when the, peak, when the case was really severe. But this uh, probable bacterial infection that was over infecting the patient together with the virus was causing this neutrophilia and after decrease, come back again and finally was recovered. In this case, the treatment was successful. If we can see in the top right, the lymphocyte absolute number, as you can see, is in this viral infection, what is dramatic, somebody asked how we can differentiate this infection from other viral infection. I think it's clear, is the lymphocyte decrease. Normally, you never see this lymphocyte decrease in any of the other viral infections. Uh, the reason that this virus is also sensitive in some few experiences we have uh, against uh, using uh, antiretrovirals that are using to the AIDS, looks like this patient, this virus may be infected, especially the CD4 cells. And, and that is the reason. But we don't see this decrease in lymphocyte infections the level of the total lymphs of three, 400, like we see in the coronavirus. In this patient, unfortunately, that was reversed and the lymphocytes came back again to the normal levels, even higher. And in this case, it was just a normal viral infection that you have even, uh, in this case, the, at the end, 2.6 thousand lymphocytes, that is in the higher level of the normal values. For this reason, yes, after uh, recover from this phase of, uh, the, it becomes like another viral infection with an increase of the lymphocytes and with a typical lymphocytes in the blood smear. In the moment of the decrease of CD4 cells, the, 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 you can see practically can in an AIDS inactivity because it's a severe immunodepressant. The NLR shows the combination of both that are independent because uh, it's not a cytopenia the, like an aplasia. Lymphocytes goes up, but neutrophil goes up. It's not, uh, you know, it's independent. And this is a reason of the NLR because it's, uh, uh, both parameters, lymphocytes and neutrophils, are independent. And we can use it in a formula like NLR, and in this case, is I think it's very useful. CRP again uh, at the at the bottom right shows the peak of the um, possible overinfection with bacterium, and after recover to normal values. 
Here we can see for the people that like the plots, you can see in the, the, the total CDC, not, if, not easy to see all the parameters, but we have checked all the parameters. And here in the right, the more important, the lymphocyte, the RDWSD, the platelets and the NLR. And you can see how the patient that goes in different levels before both the platelets were low, the RDWSD was uh, higher, okay? Here, the platelets are normal, the RDW is lower, and the lymphocytes become normal. But the reason that is the evolution of this patient with the plots and the numbers. And here, the clinical features. You see, at the beginning, it begins with like a fever. Um, sorry. Um, the, the, uh, the chest CT scan was normal. After, was a, a little greeting, a glass patchy. Uh, with the, when it became the difficulty of breathing, the dyspnea uh, was a significant progress of the previous uh, last behavior of the lungs. After uh, was beginning to use the ventilator, and that was a critical severe uh, status. After it was reducing the breathing difficulties, but high throughput oxygen. Uh, in the chest CT scan shows a double lower lung -like improvement, increasing lesion in the remaining areas. And finally, don't need the oxygenation and was a slight absorption of the lesions, fibrosis, and uh, finally was recovered. Fibrosis is like, uh, you know, uh, also uh, we can compare these uh, CT scans and X ray with other interstitial pneumonias, but this is so, so severe that it's practically white. It's incredible how the, is, is the fibrosis of the lung. Summary, we found an increase of white blood cells and neutrophils in the severe clinical situation, decrease of lymphocytes in absolute number in the severe clinical situation, increase of CRP, and increase of NLR in the severe, severe clinical situation. The second evaluation was in the same hospital, in the GSA hospital, in that we tried to differentiate severe from non-severe coronavirus infected. The, we were collecting 182 samples from 45 inpatients with coronavirus infection. 36 were mild with good outcome, 5 were moderate severe, and 4 were critical severe and with bad outcome. Here we can see similar results than the previous one uh, case study. The, the, the case study we saw before was uh, an increase uh, with uh, these three, um, three uh, asterisks showed that the significance is less than 0 0.001, very significant. The neutrophils were high, the lymphocytes were low, NLR was high, and RDWSD was high. I have to mention that RDWSD is a very good parameter for the coronavirus, but is more, more in a specific that uh, lymphocyte, uh, lymphopenia, low lymphocyte count. This is a reason I recommend to check the previous uh, RDWSD when the patient entered, because it can be other causes for high RDWSD that, that and it's important in this case, use more the delta than the reference values, because we will observe from a previous uh, RDWSD can be high for iron deficiency, can be high for many other reasons that we know. Uh, it's quite not, not rare to find in a university hospital before the coronavirus higher DW. Uh, is the, the, for me, the important is to see the check, the uh, delta check, the difference from uh, from the patient entered uh, during uh, the evolution in the in the hospital. And here, the rock curves, some of them impressive, like NLR with a rock curve of 0 0.89, fantastic. Lymphocytes also shows a very good rock curve in green. NLR is in blue, and the, in the left of the slide. And, um, and neutrophils were also good. And the formula NLR here, we begin to create a formula in that we use NLR plus RDWSD using logistic regression, in that we combine in the best way the parameters that we think that can be the best to follow up the coronavirus. Of course, again, here we can measure the NLR every day. And we can see that it's, sometimes it's much more significant to see the evolution of NLR, of, of this formula, than a, a single value if, if we don't have a previous one. So there is, for me, 
will be more important that the single measurement of this flag is to see the follow-up of this flag that will indicate the, the severity if the patient is going better or if the patient is going worse. Okay, the results again was very similar. It confirms the first case, lower lymphocytes, higher neutrophils in the severe patients. And the idea is that, that are over infected with bacteria sepsis. Their DWL is higher, and it is possible to combine both with the parameter NLR, neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. Here the formula and the cutoff that is patent pending. Uh, the cutoff will be more than 1.06. But as I said, for me, it will be more important the follow up of, this, uh, of the result of this uh, parameter obtained uh, with logistic regression. Discussion, it is possible maybe to, to differentiate mild from severe patients with NLR and the USD uh, formula with a cutoff more than 1.06 with an area under the curve of 0 0.94. It, it has asked some of the attendants how we can differentiate that from other viral infections. And I think, of course, uh, we have uh, every patient that enter in the hospital with clinical symptoms uh, now is tested for coronavirus. Can be that has coronavirus and, and, and influenza H1N1, yes, for sure, but quite the epidemic and also the test that everybody has. And now with the actual test, we can have the results in four hours. I think immediately you can exclude and to see if it's really a coronavirus or not. Uh, of course, uh, with 45 patients uh, are necessary more studies to confirm the fact. And now the last of uh, uh, the last the last evaluation that will be the more complete. Here I will spend a little more time. This study was done in 92 patients with COVID-19 infection. Uh, were 44, uh, 447 uh, samples from 92 patients. 59 were mild. 16 were moderate severe and 19 were critical severe and bad outcome. Here we can see more details of the groups. We can talk a little that you can read it. Uh, the group one was mild and moderate uh, uh, together. The mild, the clinical symptoms were mild and there was no signs of pneumonia on imaging. The moderate with fever, respiratory tract symptoms, dyspnea, and imaging uh, shows pneumonia. The group two was severe meet any of the following it's like a score respiratory respiratory distress respiratory rate more than 30 beats per minute in the resting state it means oxygen saturation less than 93 percent arterial blood oxygen partial pressure oxygen concentration less than 300 millimeters of mercury uh, one millimeter is 0 0.13 group three critical severe patient group are patients in intensive care with respiratory pressure and shock many times. The group four, and that was new in this uh, in this study, we uh, selected the for every patient the previous uh, results before they change from mild to severe or from severe to critical severe. The group four is when they change to mild, moderate to severe. And the group five are the controls of the patients before they become critical severe. That we did that trying to see before it occurs in order we can have preventive measures. If it's a uh, if if the failure is because bacteria, we can begin treatment of bacteria before it's a sepsis when it's only a bacteremia, and, and and that is the purpose of that. In that we try to predict producer when the patient is not severe when it's still in the group of, of mild and moderate to predict when they are going to go worse. And the same, when they go, the patient is going to enter in intensive care, if we don't do anything to, in the group five to predict that is uh, predictive analysis. Here you can see the, the statistics without the predicting groups in that we check here in this statistical analysis, we were open mind, we were thinking out of the box, we check everything in the CBC and differential, including the research parameters and everything. And here you can see the mean values for every of the groups. The age, of course, the is uh, are older in the group three, that is a critical severe. Uh, the age is also a very good parameter. The hemoglobin was lower in the group three, 
but also lower in the group two. The macro grants, suppressively, not, are not very, uh, in absolute number, are not very high, and uh, but are significant. For the short, even small values, as you can see in the comparison, group one, that is the mild, moderate to severe, and group one versus three is very significant, even if the values change a little. The lymphocyte absolute numbers here, you see the percentage of, of decrease or increase are also important. The WSD, the monocytes are also important. Decrease in the group three. And I think that is becoming, uh, coming together with what is called immunoparalysis. That is the decrease of the positivity of uh, the neutrophils in absolute number, you can see, is absolutely correlating. Group two is 9,000, group one is 6,000, and group three, 12, uh, near 13,000. It's a very good parameter and correlates very well with the critical status of the patient. NLR, the same, okay. PLCR uh, uh, is also good. PLR, platelets are very important. When they, when they decrease, you are really in a, in a critical situation and leukocytes too. And here, it, the same that previously, but you can see the group four and five that are the previous results before something bad happens. And you can see here the comparison of the group two and group four that are uh, patients that become four and comparing with the first result before they become four. And you can see here which parameters become significant. Uh, like in macrograms, lymphocytes, neutrophils, NLR, P PLR, and leukocytes. And the same for groups three to five. Okay, Here it appears the lymphocyte Z that uh, the, uh, it's increasing in the group, um, in the group uh, five, that is, previous to entering the severe, the lymphocyte size, somebody asked in the chat, about the morphology of the lymphocytes, lymphocytes become activated and reactive before it becomes severe, with a lymphocyte Z of 834 before to, uh, the, the patient enters in the severe status. The same with monocyte Z, the size of the monocytes. Before to enter in a severe status, the monocyte size measured with this subpopulation data increase a lot. And the same, the neutrophil size. Looks like everything is activated is a big activation of the uh, uh, neutrophils, monocytes, lymphocytes before you become severe. In some of the cases I have seen uh, eosinophilia also previous to entering the severe status that can show this like reaction, big reaction before this happens, like it's a storm of cytokines, uh, uh, you know, that predict that the patient is going to enter in a very bad uh, situation. Here, maybe it's very good to show the same with, uh, with the whisker plot analysis in that you can see the lymphocyte absolute number in all the groups. The group one, remember, is mild moderate. And, uh, group two is severe. Group three is critical severe. And the group four is patients uh, that before to enter in, my, in, in severe and five patients before to enter in critical severe. As you can see, that is clearly that the lymphocytes with a very significant P, uh, it's uh, decreasing uh, when the patients become moderate or severe. The same for the neutrophil absolute number, very significant increase of neutrophils, but very proportional. That shows that the degree of the severity can be measured when we are overloaded with a lot of patients and few doctors. The degree of the severity can be measured, maybe, with the neutrophil count. The RDWSD, again, very significant with the patient in group three, and is so clear, and that is important for a follow-up. As I told you, even if the patient has a previous higher RDWSD, will increase higher. And to follow up this parameter, together with neutrophils, can be very good to see the severity, how the patient is going better or worse. Platelets. Somebody mentioned the platelets. Are we going to talk about platelets? For sure. Platelets here is clear, are not changed in the, in the uh, severe that are not critical, that don't need and decrease clearly when the patient become in this, after this storm of cytokines, the platelets, maybe the D-timer will be positive too. Uh, and, may, and we have to uh, 
analyze if the patient also have intravascular coagulation. The thing is, yes, platelets are a good indication of severity with a very significant P. And here, the cell population data, my talk is more about cytomorphometry. I am, uh, I, I was the, 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 first, uh, the first article published in the world about cell population data, how we can use the size, not only the red cells and platelets, also the leukocytes. I published myself, was in malaria. And here you can see that the monocyte cell, the size of the monocytes is a very good prediction factor about the, that the patient is going to enter next day or next days in the critical severe. That is maybe correlating with the IL-6, with the, with the storm of cytokines, and maybe the decrease of the positivity for HLA-DR in the monocytes that the, the patient become with immunoparalysis. You can see clear the whisker plot analysis is absolutely uh, not overlapping and can be a very good parameter to investigate in the future as a prediction of a critical severe uh, clinical situation. The LR, the neutrophil lymphocyte ratio, we can see here the different uh, situations, okay? And uh, with very significant P in the group two and three is a very good parameter, of course, together with the coronavirus uh, endemic pandemia, the number of cases, uh, we have to use that, and the tests that every day are becoming faster and we will be able to do, I am sure, in a few hours. Results, finally, the, the, the same that similar, no news, only the monocyte theta increase, the size that is um, important to mention that the morphology of the cells can be automated today with mind ray instruments. And here the cutoffs, the, um, in the severe cases, the lymphocytes are lower than 630 and the absolute neutrophils are um, uh, higher, more than 9,200 uh, in the patient with bad outcome. And the platelet decrease, the cutoff is 184. The RDW increase is 41.6, but as I said, we need to consider the delta check and the previous results of the patients when, if we have any previous delta check uh, of the patient before, because it came for another reason to the hospital, or the, the results from the first day in that the patients entered in the hospital. Here, the possible causes of the decrease of the absolute lymphocytes. I think the, the virus can be selected to CD4 cells, but also there is a very important research today about the MDSC, MDSC cells, myeloid-derived suppressor cells. These cells are the enemy of the immune system and are increasing cancer and increasing viral infections. And these cells provoke immunosuppression. How we can detect that? Because the monocytes become negative for HLA-DR, sometimes also negative for the CD14. The monocytes have to be measured with the CD33 that is in the monocytic area that are positive, and they are DR negative. Uh, more than 30, 40% of the monocytes are DR negative, and is well described in sepsis and in cancer that the patient have immunoparalysis. I think we need to investigate that because there is some treatment, maybe not proved yet, but cimetidine, a very old uh, anti-acid drug, uh, are, is useful for MDS to, to, to uh, cure or to treat this situation. The absolute neutrophils increase, I think, uh, if we don't have time or there is no any culture or gram stain that permits to see which bacteria we need to cover when the neutrophils increase the patients with uh, with an antibiotherapy that covers the more frequent uh, germs in the area. The platelet decrease because sepsis and the RDW increase because oxidative stress inhibited inhibit red cell maturation factors, lack of nutrients, inflammation. The cell population data, the monocyte zeta, Z increase, decrease in the severe cases decrease before uh, uh, that happens. It, it, remember, it's the group five. The patients that become severe one day or two days before have an increase of the monocyte Z, but after it decreases, and that is also important, the follow-up of this parameter. And the neutrophil fluorescence, even if there are no many in macrograms, the neutrophils are activated and increase in the cases with bad outcome, more than 483, and stay normal in the severe cases. Uh, only 8% of increase. The result, the, the summary is BC uh, 600, 
6,900. Results may help in the classification of severity in patients affected with COVID-19. Infection uh, can be uh, predicted uh, before occurs. Maybe we have to double check for sure all these results. And thank you for your attention. This is a lymphocyte from a young lady, 17 years old, with a mononucleosis infection, Epstein-Barr virus. I did myself the photo and it was real, no Photoshop, with the form of a heart. Thank you so much.